Hello. Welcome to tonight's Bible study. Going through the Old Testament, Samuel, David, he realizes that Samuel, excuse me, Saul, Samuel had died, and uh, Saul was going to uh, eventually catch him, David figured. So he went over and uh, lived in Philistine, which is pretty amazing that he could do that since he killed so many of them. Remember, David killed his 10,000 and Saul his 1,000. But the uh, Philistine king that was in that region thought it very cool to have David there because he was such a mighty warrior and David uh, was being friendly to him. He even gave David a city to live in, him and his 600 men. And David would go out and, and raid uh, territories of Moab and other enemies, not the Philistines, but other of the enemies of Israel. And David would lie and say that he went into Israel and raided. But, uh, uh, it's a tough place to be. But, uh, the king there it had told him to come up with him to fight against Israel and uh, Saul, King Saul was there and he would find himself fighting against Saul if he did go up and uh, we'll find out that David isn't able to go and fight against him but Saul sees the great Philistine army coming and he's trembling because it is so great and mighty and Saul he is trying to inquire of the Lord and there's no word coming to him from the Lord and so he uh, you know asks any of the prophets in Israel they were getting no word from the Lord and so he ended up going down to a witch in the city of Endor. So you may have heard of the witch of Endor. She was a spiritist and she, uh, he asked her to summons up Samuel. And I don't know that she actually ever did summons up a spirit before because all of a sudden uh, Samuel showed up and she screamed <laughs> and then she said that you deceive me you're King Saul and uh, and then Samuel told uh, Saul said the reason the Lord's not talking to you is he's fulfilling in you what he had told you and that he is going to uh, take the kingdom away from you and give it to your neighbor, David. And so David will become the king of Israel very soon. Uh, in the biblical record, we're looking at the last day of Saul's life. Uh, Saul was very scared, trembling. He could hardly move. And knowing he was going to have to go up to this dreadful battle. And so the witch of Endor tried to give him some bread. He wouldn't take it. But his servants urged him and she urged him. And he took some bread and she killed a calf and prepared it for them and fed them and then they went back to the camp and prepare for a battle that was not going to go their way. You know, that might be the time I might want to get out of town. But uh, at least he followed through with 
what the Lord would have. Uh, hmm. So, tough call. But he knew that it, it was his last day. And uh, there seemed to be no sign of repentance with Saul, which is sad. But uh, Samuel said that he would be there with him tomorrow, which makes me think that maybe he did find forgiveness. Unless he was on the other side of the gulf, <laughs> which would be in the burning side of the bosom of, there was the bosom of Abraham where Samuel was at, and across uh, like a valley on the other side was the hell of the underworld. And so, and one could not pass from one side to the other. So that is what Samuel and Saul discussed. And Saul's going there tomorrow's lesson. Today's lesson in Romans, Paul says, I urge you, therefore, brethren, in the view of God's mercies, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your reasonable act of service. Then you'll be able to test and prove what God's will is. God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. Wow, that is such a powerful scripture. God wrote that on my heart. I urge you therefore, brethren, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Wow, that's, that is a high call. Therefore, based on everything that Paul has described to us in the book of Romans, our reasonable act of worship should be to lay down our life for the Lord, to lay down our self-will and to embrace the Lord's will completely in our life. Then, as we embrace the Lord's will completely in our life, we'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, his pleasing, his perfect will, and apply that to our life. And Paul goes on to say, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to, because God is given to each man a measure of faith. He measures it out. He gives one person a, a smaller measure than another person. He has a big uh, call on somebody's life. He wants them to do something that requires a lot of faith. Leave everything to go. And so with that measure of faith, he only accomplishes the task that the Lord has given him to do. So that person who's been given the large measure shouldn't think of himself more highly because he's been given a large measure of faith to do the work that the Lord has given him to do. But in humility, just do the work and praise God that the work gets done, but embrace the brother who does the smaller task because we all are part of the same body and we're all working together for the Lord's glory. And so don't Think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Billy Graham didn't go around touting how he was so much better than someone else. He didn't because he was just doing the will of the Father. And praise the Lord, he did a great job. And that's what we should want to do. Just do the will of the Father. 
And then uh, Paul also talks about the fact that we shouldn't be wise in our own opinion, uh, that we should bless those who persecute us. Yes, he says bless. Don't persecute. There's a, a great scripture, and I love it, when uh, the servant of Elisha was very fearful. He had Elijah and Elisha. Elisha was the child prodigy or the apprentice of Elijah when Elijah got called up into heaven uh, and did not die. Elisha took his mantle and carried on the ministry here on the earth in a powerful way. Matter of fact, there were, he asked for a double portion of uh, the Lord's spirit upon him than Elijah had, and he accomplished twice as many miracles as accounted in the biblical record than Elijah did. So that was amazing. But they were surrounded by enemy, Elisha and his servant. And Elisha's servant was fearful and said, Master, we're surrounded. And he said, those that are with us are more than than they have. And he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, open his eyes so that he might see. And surrounding the mountains around them, he saw chariots of fire with angels and that they were ready to do a mighty work on their behalf and they had nothing to worry about that the angels were covering them and so as it was this mighty army that was there Elisha uh, through the power of God struck them with blindness so here's this massive army and they're all blind and Elisha leads them to the Israelite uh, army and could have told them to wipe them out. But what's this scripture say? Bless your enemy, don't curse them. And it says, if your enemy hungers, feed them. And if he thirsts, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head and so what did Elisha tell the army to do he said feed them and give them something to drink and send them on back to their land and they regained their sight and so they felt pretty humbled that Elisha had that type of power over them that they were powerless to do anything uh, that God would not allow. And so, uh, we can look at that and say in our other story, Saul's going out and God's allowed the Philistine army to be powerful enough to and God was going to accomplish what he said he was going to do, and that was strip the kingdom from his hand. Hmm. A lot of, a lot of casualties because of one man's disobedience. So we need to be careful who we follow. Make sure that we're putting our faith and our trust in men that God is working with and not men that are seeking their own glory. Because there's plenty of them out there. And so that is really uh, our lesson for today.
and it says uh, just the point of today's lesson is wholeheartedly do what the Lord has given you to do do it in a sacrificial way putting all of our self will to the side so that God's will would be done in and through our life amen I hope that you had a great Mother's Day today. Mother's Day is coming to an end in three hours. I hope that you did have a good Mother's Day today. And I hope that you will have a blessed week this week. And that you also had a good time in the church service today if you were able to go. And I'm looking forward to looking, watching Passion City Church online and you can uh, watch also Passion City Church DC you can type in just simply PCCDC and it'll come up <laughs> and uh, and on Monday and Tuesday you can watch with the full worship service uh, by Wednesday it's just the sermon so make sure to tune in as Pastor Ben Stewart is continuing to teach through the book of Ephesians, no, Colossians, I should say. Ephesians is what we're going through in, at Grace Church here in Laurel, in which uh, my children and wife have been attending, and I've been attending with them uh, because it's right here in our neighborhood, and I want them to be plugged into a church in our neighborhood uh, because we can minister here in the neighborhood as well as do the work at Passion City Church in Washington, D.C. So I pray that you're sold out for the Lord and that you're doing a work for Him, uh, letting Him do a work through you and through your life. Praise God. And I lift you up to Jesus and the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night.